How would you like to buy something once and not have to replace it for over a hundred years? They don't make stuff like that anymore, but that's what we're going to talk about today. Hey everybody, welcome back to The Homestead. This is Kevin with Living Traditions Homestead. And today, we're going to talk about something that we've gotten a lot of comments about, a lot of questions about, and that is our cast iron collection. Uh, you guys have seen it kind of in the background of our other videos. Um, this isn't all of it, uh, but I've brought out some of my favorite things to show you. Um, and most importantly, what I want to talk to you about is using cast iron on a daily basis. About three or four years ago, Sarah and I made the decision that we were going to give up all of the so-called non-stick cookware. All the stuff that's covered in Teflon or other chemicals. Uh, that are supposed to make life easier. And the decision to do that was really twofold. Um, one, we read a lot of reports that how dangerous that stuff can really be for your health, both with it flaking off into your food and the fumes that come up when you actually heat that stuff up and breathe it in. And the other thing is, we were just sick of having to replace all of our cookware every five or so years. Um, and that stuff just wears out so quickly and you just need to go back and buy more which you know if you believe in conspiracies that may be part of the plan <laughs> you know make something that wears out so people need to keep buying it on the other hand when it comes to cast iron this stuff lasts forever if you take care of it uh, if you treat it right uh, it will last forever you'll be passing this on to your kids and your grandkids and their grandkids and their grandkids and it'll really never wear out and the best part is if you do mess up if you do say let it get a little rusty or you do something wrong you can always strip it down and start over and just re-season it and you're good to go all over again so I'm going to show you some of the things that we have and talk to you about uh, some of the you know everyday uses of cast iron so uh, this is the stuff that we use on a daily basis. Um, most of this I've picked up either at uh, uh, thrift stores, garage sales, or you know, flea market type places. Um, we've also had some of it given it given to us. Uh, we've gotten some from friends and relatives. Um, some of it is really old. Some of it's not very old at all. Uh, let's talk about some of those differences. Uh, the two main names that you're going to hear uh, when you're talking about cast iron are Wagnerware and Griswold. Those are the two really kind of more valuable names as far as antique cast iron goes. Um, those, neither one are being made anymore. Uh, the only company that is still making cast iron in the United States is the Lodge Company. Uh, I have several Lodge uh, cast iron pans. Um, you'll hear people who are big time collectors of cast iron kind of putting down Lodge products. Um, my opinion is if you season them, if you take care of them and use them frequently, that they work really, really well. Um, this big Lodge pan, which is a very old, um, but I did find at, uh, I believe, a, a Goodwill for around $10. Um, has a really nice finish. Uh, we use it a lot when we make things like, uh, like hash brown potatoes or, you know, country fried potatoes, that type of thing. When we have a lot of people over to the homestead and we need to do a lot of cooking for a lot of scrambled eggs and that type of thing, uh, we'll use a pan like this. Um, now on the other hand, this is a really nice Wagnerware pan and it's very smooth on the inside. Now the Lodge pan is a little bit coarse on the inside, but if it's seasoned right, it's still going to be non-stick. The Wagnerware is almost like a glass finish on the inside. This pan is probably from about 1930 or 1940. This is another Wagner pan that is a flat pan. We use this a lot for when we're making pancakes. Uh, we have a biscuit pan. This 
is actually a pan that was given to us by a family friend. It doesn't have a name on it at all, um, but you'll see that it has this kind of ridge along the bottom. What that tells me is that it's, a, it's an old pan, probably from the 1920s or 30s, and it was made to originally sit on a wood stove. Uh, that little ridge actually kept it just far enough off the top of the wood stove uh, to give a little bit of uh, heat dispersion underneath the pan. Uh, this lid actually goes on this, and this was actually originally uh, what they called a chicken fryer. I'm going to talk to you about some of the different styles that we have down here. Um, this is actually uh, a Dutch oven. Uh, this Dutch oven I actually got from uh, the person we call Great Grandpa Dan. Uh, he wasn't my great grandpa, um, but I didn't really know any of my grandpas. They all died when I was pretty young, and Dan was kind of a grandpa to me. So um, I actually got this Dutch oven from Dan. Um, I'm not sure of the age on it. Um, I believe it's a Wagner Ware, but it's unmarked. Uh, but I use this Dutch oven all the time. Uh, this is just a large, um, what they call camp stove. Uh, I use this all the time. Uh, this I picked up at Walmart uh, for I think $35 or $40. Um, I use this all the time when I make baked beans around the campfire. Um, what you do, you'll see the top is kind of full of ashes, is you actually put your coals on top and your coals underneath and you bake from both sides and that works for cooking things evenly from all the way around and you actually can read about how to put a certain number of coals on top and a certain number of coals under the bottom to get exactly the temperature that you want. I use this for making my cowboy beans, I use this for making cobblers, um, anything like that. It works excellent on a fire. Uh, this is a uh, 16 by 9 uh, cake pan. Uh, we use this for a variety of different things. I mean, the nice thing about this is that, I mean, it's very universal. It can go on a grill, it can go in the oven. I mean, it's just, you can use it for everything. For, for cornbread, I mean, it just works great. Now this, this is kind of one of my prized possessions. Uh, I found this at a, an estate sale several years ago. I've never seen anything like it. I've never seen one again. I mean, I've seen them online, but in person, they're, they're becoming pretty rare. And this is a Griswold uh, waffle iron. You can see the waffle design inside. And it's actually got this ball valve here. And this ring was actually designed to sit on the top of a wood stove. Put your waffle batter in. Let one side get done, be able to pick it up, flip it over, put the other side down, and let your waffles get perfectly done. So, um, this is something, I'll be honest, I haven't even used it yet. The final thing is this right here. What this is, is actually not for cooking at all. This is actually an iron from Korea. Uh, the people that I bought it from uh, lived in Korea uh, for a short time in the 1970s, and they bought this at a shop there. And what this is, it's a, it's a clothes iron. Uh, you actually fill the top with, with coals, and then you would use this to iron your clothes with once it heats up. And you know, we've got a lot of questions about the rack that we use to hang our cast iron. Um, it isn't something that we purchased, uh, it's something that we made. Uh, the bar here is actually made out of black pipe that you would use for uh, like a gas line. Uh, and then the fittings are, are actually the same thing except they only come in silver, uh, at least where we live. So uh, I, all I did was paint them to match the pipe. Um, now the main thing is you want to make sure that you're measuring this so that it hits the studs in your wall. Because cast iron weighs a lot. Uh, a pan like this weighs probably around 20 pounds. Uh, and when you put all of these hanging at once, that's a lot of weight hanging on your wall. Uh, the rings that we use here, uh, these were actually uh, for curtains. Um, and then the hooks are just S hooks, uh, but I did bend them so that one side is out uh, so that the pots can hang on. Um, but that's it. I mean, there's nothing fancy about it at all. Uh, I think it looks pretty cool. Uh, and we've got a lot of uh, a lot of compliments on it. I think you should try building one of these yourself. Um, if you're 
you know, if you're buying a lot of cast iron, either at garage sales or flea markets or auctions, uh, you should definitely make a rack like this because it's cool. I mean, you should be proud of the things that you collect and this is a great way to display it so that when people come over, uh, you can start a conversation with them about how much healthier it is uh, to use cast iron. Uh, I hope you guys will give this a try. If you have specific questions about cast iron, uh, let me know. Um, all of this stuff, a lot of this stuff when we got it was in really bad shape and I've completely redone it uh, to make it what it is today. Uh, most of the stuff I buy because I'm cheap uh, isn't in good shape when we buy it. I'll be doing a video in the future about how to completely strip down and reseason cast iron and start over from scratch even if it's rusty. Uh, but if you have questions before I do that video, let me know. Thank you guys so much for coming by the homestead today. Uh, we really do appreciate all of you. I hope that you will hit the subscribe button before you leave. And until next time, you guys, take care and God bless.